cleaning material na to uh, ang 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 nataka inconducive to learning naman to training room na to ang init-init mga tipong ganun wala nang tama si Helen Grace Taylor Sario walang nakikitang maganda sa lahat na bagay sa loob ng training so how to deal with them how to deal with them so ta- alam mo na natin bakit nagkakaroon ng complainer kasi itong taong to uh, probably ginagamit nila tong training to vent off their um unsatisfaction okay to let off some steam kasi probably nakikita nila na pwede naman ako magreklamo dito bayad naman tong trainer na to hindi hindi ako nito kokontrahen or something so uh, nakikita nila that that is the venue for them to express some of their opinion kasi open naman sa training so those are potentially some of the reasons why may mga ganung nagko-complain now how to deal with that Ngayon, you have to ask yourself, if the complaint is the complaint valid or not? Now, kung valid, what do you do? So, i-acknowledge mo ngayon yung point niya. Um, if 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 the the complaint is valid or not. Second, apologize ka ngayon for the inconvenience kasi kung totoo naman na malabo nga yung training material mo or um there's something wrong with the venue or it's too hot or the trainer is not expressing or napakahina ng bosses ng trainer, then you have to acknowledge that. Second, kung, kung in-acknowledge natin na may problem, dapat mag-provide tayo ng solution dun sa problem na yun, sa complain niya. We have to provide solution. Oh, okay po, sir. Naintindihan naman po namin. Um, pasensya na po. Um, we'll do something about it. And syempre, lastly, pasalamatan mo ngayon yung tao. Thank the person for what? For bringing up the issue. And then, syempre, we have already proven the solution. The next thing is to move forward. Move on. So, ganun lang. Hindi yung babarahin at hindi yung babarahin na natin agad. Yung you argue with the person, you insult the person, mayaman ka kasi kaya hindi ka na nakontento. Mga ganun. No, don't do that. Um, acknowledge mo. If, if, if the complaint is valid, then then do as necessary. Ngayon, your next question would be, paano kung hindi valid yung complaint? Now, you still, you still need to acknowledge na may complaint siya, whether valid or not valid. So, sir, ito po yung complaint nyo, okay? Although, based on our um, data po, na i-provide naman po ito sa inyo, ganyan. Now, um, you will use your team, syempre yung other participants. Tatanungin mo sila. Um, anyone here who, al- who also experienced the same? Ngayon, kung wala naman nag-agree kay kuya, kung siya lang, edi ibig sabihin, ito talaga valid. So, then you will you will tell him na, sir, it seems na this is an isolated case, so we'll make sure that this doesn't happen again. So, ganun. Now, may nagtanong, sabi ni Luigi Badillo, paano pag hindi pa rin siya makamove on? Paano kung nireklamo pa rin niya? Okay, you have to invite the person privately, maybe during a break or during a workshop or exercise, then, then tell him, ano yung impact ng behavior niya dun sa training natin, sa, sa other participants, and sa trainer itself. Then tell him, um, what can we what can, what can we do sir to to um address your concern o ano ano ba talaga yung gusto niyang gusto niya siyang gusto niyang mangyari now um worst comes to worst pag hindi pa rin siya satisfied okay nagrereklamo pa rin siya ayaw niya talaga you have to give him the option sir you either participate or you leave the session so hindi naman bawal yun sa trainers eh na kasi if you still you cannot control people if you see that the person really is disengaged and you have exhausted all your options then yun lang yun lang yung gagawin mo the the worst case you let them choose um participate or leave the session pero you don't do it in front of the class you do it privately okay clear yun sa atin okay so itong arguer and whiner ang tawag sa kanila ay mga ano fighters. Okay, sila yung mga fighter. And we want them 
to be on our side, okay? So let's not um, insult them or anger them in, in any case. Clear sa atin yun? Okay, next. Meron tayong mga tinatawag na class clowns. Yan. Meron ba dito mga class clowns? Yung um, ang hilig mag-joke. Yung tipong 30 minutes na ng, ng klase, um, nasayang na dahil lang sa pagjo-joke ni ate at ni kuya. Yan. Um, nadidistract na yung buong klase dahil sa kanya. And isa pang katulad niya, questioner. Silang dalawa, yung class club at saka questioner, they are the people who are called distractors. So, sino yung mga distractors? Itong mga distractors na to, sila yung mga tao na ask questions or raises issues that are not related to the topic which is being discussed. So, lagi yung nagsasabi or nagjo-joke na, na or nagtatanong na, ay ma, bakit ganito, bakit ganyan? Hanggang sa na, na, na ma-manipulate na niya yung flow ng klase, napupunta na sa other topic, napupunta na sa kwentuhan. You, eh, nawawala ka na sa topic na extend nga yung time mo. So, bakit may mga ganun tao? Dahil ba kulang sila sa pansin? Ha? <laughs> Sabi ni Jasmine, diba, nagpapapansin. Ayan. So, when, sabi natin, when, when we are confronted with, with difficult behaviors, we should step back and objectively assess the root cause of that behavior. Um, yung iba kasi, talagang enjoy lang talaga nila yung makipagtsikahan. And feeling nila, mas natututo sila pag madaldal sila. Um, they get so focused in their thoughts and expression na ganun. Um, ang nangyayari, nawawala na ngayon sa, sa topic. So, kasi ina-entertain natin. So, what should we do about that? So, If in front of the group, um, kaila, minsan kasi ang ginagawa ng mga trainers, they have this house rule. Okay? Na kung sino yung may mga cosh ball na gano'n, yung tipong, okay sir, kung kanino yung cosh ball na yon, kung kanino yung chance to speak, bibigyan, bibigyan lang siya ng time na two minutes for them to speak. Or what others do, ako yung ginagawa ko during the workshops or lectures, Um, nagalagay ako ng topic sa board. Ito yung topic na i-discuss ko right now. Para alam ng class na whatever questions they have, dapat surrounding or beating around that specific topic. And then, minsan, I give the attendees post-its. So, may mga post-its sila. So, I tell them, if you have if you have questions in mind regarding this topic, you you write it in this post-it and then put it on the board. Meron tayong parking lot dito na board. Um, and then we'll tackle those questions after we discuss this lecture. So, ganun on how to deal with those para, in a sense, um, na-acknowledge natin yung question nila, whether related or unrelated, mas ma-filter kasi natin pag nadun sa post-it. Uh, and, of course, hindi naman natin sila na-ignore. Now, um, minsan naman, If wala ka nang naumpisan mo na yung, yung class, wala kang ganong naging um, house rule, what you can do is, ma'am, di ba, may tataas ako, ma'am, ma'am, ako, sasagot ako, sasagot ako. Okay, you acknowledge, okay, thank you for 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 that statement or for that question. Now, let let me hear others. What can you say about it? So, you can point to the other attendees. Then, you know, you can ask how, how what they can say about the topic para naman yung questioners na to is um mag, matuto sila na they need to listen to the what others say or you can say um interesting sir interesting po yung question na yun, but can you hold it until later because uh, we will uh, be dealing with that in the next deck or in the next slide so that's what you can do um ayan Sabi nila, pwede ba before start ng training ay inform na agad ang mga participants na walang magtatanong ng out of the topic? Yes. Um, you can always tell them that um, questions are, um, are, 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 tawag dito, can 
visually seated, but then please um, just keep it within the topic. Ngayon, um, in private, kung talagang sobrang kulit talaga, in private, you can always tell them, thank the person. Sabihin, sabihin mo, thank you for your energy and involvement. Napaka-active mo. Um, then explain na kaya lang, ano, where ito lang yung time natin for discussion and these are the other agendas na, that we need to discuss. So, para alam niya na tone it down, please, pero in 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 a in an appropriate manner or gawin mo siyang kakontsaba okay um become sabi nga natin di ba gamit keep them closer keep the enemies closer so what do we do with them ngayon if you have workshops or if you have exercises then that questioner will be a big help how so di ba after exercises or workshop for example if it's a group activity Um, you can call them. Okay, Sir X, um, can you help me um, get feedback from the other team? Can you ask questions sa kanila regarding their presentation? Mga ganon. So, pwede nyo, you can, you can get the assistance. Gawin mo co-op, di ba? Gawin mo assistant facilitator ko, no? Yung mga ganyan, ganyan participants. Para mapakinabangan natin sa session natin yung mga inputs nila. Clear? Okay. Um, basta sa atin lang bilang trainer, let's not get distracted from class clowns and questionnaires. Um, sabi naman natin, di ba, as long as we know the session that we have, hindi tayo mawawala. And we should not lose our patience or get, get angry with that. Kasi um, kung meron mang mga tao na deliberate talaga na ganun, deliberate na ginagawa nila yun. Mabibilang lang, mabibilang lang natin sa daliri yung mga gano'n. So, let's hope for the better. Okay? Class clown. Class clown din ba, ma'am, yung pag-food lang ang habol kaya na-aten? Um, no. Hindi sila class clown. Pero class clown are those, napatawa si Franklin Owen. Okay? Class clown, class clown are those who always jokes. Yung tipong hindi ko naman tinatawag, Uh, bigla na lang may maririnig ka na nagsalita tapos tatawa yung buong team. Tapos pag hindi mo pinansin, chichikahin niya ngayon yung katabi niya. Uy, alam ko ko ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Diba? Yung tipong maghahanap ng kakampi kasi wala pumapansin sa kanya. So, what you have to do, i-involve mo sila, i-involve mo sila sa class. Lapitan mo. Pag, diba, when we go around the class, uh, when we discuss lectures, we go around the class. So, minsan, magkaroon ng topic na doon tatabi ka sa kanya. Doon ka magdi-discuss para makita niya, uh, para magkunwari siyang nakikinig or eventually makikinig na rin siya. Okay? Next. Yan. Sino yung mga yan? May mga ganyan bang trainees ngayon? Kasi 8 o'clock na. So, malamang yung iba, patulog na. Ayan. So, who are these trainees? Or who are these participants? Are the, these are the participants that we call the quiet ones or the withdrawers. And we have those whom we call sleepers. Mukhang si Kenneth Tristan may kilala na quiet one withdrawer or sleeper. Okay. So, sino ba tong mga participants na to? Okay. So, yung mga participants na to, <laughs> according to John Carr, the one nearest the door. Haha. <laughs> okay. These participants, these quiet ones, are those na talagang, sige, ba, okay lang, bahala na kayo dyan. Ako dito, sitting pretty lang ako dito. I'll just enjoy the wind. I'll enjoy the food. I'll enjoy the drink. Just go on with your class. I'll do my thing here. Uh, those are the quiet ones. Those are the passive attendees wherein they don't even care what's happening in the class. They just do their thing. Play mobile legends. Or do TikTok when the class is going on. So those are the quiet ones or the withdrawers. They are withdrawn from the, from the class. So what? why are there withdrawers or quiet ones? Um, sabi kasi, um, some of the participants, their way of actively participating, ito na yung kokopyahin na nila yung may nakikita kayong participants talagang kopyang-kopya talaga yung tipong 
parang feeling ko lahat ng sinasabi ko, sinusulat niya. Yun, may mga ganong participants na hindi naman sila sumasagot sa klase, but then, sulat lang talaga ng sulat. Or the, how they actively participate is just by listening carefully. So that's how they participate. Now, how how do we encourage their participation? How do we um, let them join us? Okay, how? Okay, sabi itong mga quiet one or withdrawers, di ba? Shy type lang talaga sila. Okay? Shy type lang talaga sila. Tapos, pwedeng, pwede kasi na yung ibang participant na doon yung boss niya. So, medyo ilag siya ngayon mag-speak up because their immediate superior is amongst the class. So, how to how to confront them or how to deal with them? Okay? One one way that you can do, di ba? In, in, in a lecture, we give examples or stories or hypothetical statements. Use his name. Okay? Use his name in one of your stories or in one of your examples. Para ma-engage ngayon yung interest niya. Ay, pangalan ko yun. Nadidinig ko yung pangalan ko. Ah. So, at least, yung interest niya mapipik. Um, when, when they are um, experiencing such. Or, another thing, um, what you can do, di ba, meron tayong mga workshops or exercises during the session. Um, instead of having group work, a small group of four, five, or six, what you can do is a body-body system na um, workshop wherein meron siyang kapartner na isa. Siyempre, mahihiya na yon na hindi mag-participate, na dalawa na nga lang sila. Tapos, pababayaan pa niya yung partner niya. So, that's one way of um, letting them participate. Another one, um, ask them about questions na related sa circumstances niya or sa work niya. Para naman makarelate siya. Okay, sir, can you give examples of uh, what you're experiencing in this department? Have you experienced the same yung dinidiscuss natin kanina? Yan. So, that's how you can solicit um, responses from from this member. Um, how about naman yung mga, ano, mga uh, pasaway talaga yung ano ba? Ang kulit-kulit nyo, mama. Sinabi sa inyo, ayoko nga mag-participate. Kayo na nga lang dyan. Ako na lang dito. May mga gano'n, di ba? Ayoko talaga, mami. Pasensya na talaga. Ayoko talaga. Yung tipong pinatayo mo na siya. <laughs> Ayaw dyan talaga. So, you have to, you know, worst. Ito yung mga worst. Talagang you have to ask them privately and tell them, um, what's the reason for that behavior? Okay? Um, explain, lagi mo explain ano yung impact ng behavior niya sa klase, sa group. Yan, dahil ayaw mong mag-participate yung, iba tuloy, yung ibang training natin, ayaw na yung mag-participate. So, ang sad nun, mga ganang tipo. Okay, tapos, um, you offer option then either to participate or leave the session. If you, sir, um, either participate or leave the session because you won't be able to maximize the learnings designed for this session if you will not undergo the exercises. Mga ganun. So you have to explain. Yun na yung worst case yung kailangan mo pang i-invite siya privately for, for the class. And another thing, one thing you can do then is di ba may mga exercises. Ngayon, yung mga withdrawer o yung mga quiet ones, kunin nyo silang observers. Okay? Observer in a sense na, okay, kapag, kapag meron na tayong class, pag meron na tayong class, So after the group the group session you ask na yung the observer okay sir um can you share with us what you observed nung naggagawa sila ng activity um how did they work together para ma-finish yung task mga ganun yung i-ask mo question para in one way or another makikita mo makikita mo yung um how he observes the things kasi minsan yung mga ganung participant doon lang doon sila magaling talaga or medyo mabagal yung catch up nila kaya siguro hindi sila makapag sagot ng mga exams or questions so that's one thing you can do to solicit response okay sleeper yan ang ginagawa ko voice modulation diyan okay bakit sila sleepers may bakit ganun yung behavior nila either may mga ganung disorder or sakit di ba or Galing nga sila, yung pagod na pagod sila, talagang yun na lang yung pahinga nila, yung training, matulog sa training. So, 
hangover according to Gorky Muhammad. Okay. So maybe hangover. So what to do with them? You modulate your voice, um louder your voice, give emphasis on more important items or you go around the room and discuss things in a short distance from him para he can hear na, why is the voice getting louder and louder? Bakit parang palapit na ng palapit si ma'am? And then piglang pag tumingin siya ngayon, oh my gosh, katabi ko na pala si ma'am. Ayan. So para mas maging alert sila. So that's one way of dealing with them. Okay, clear ba sa atin? May natututunan ba tayo? Are we experiencing such? Okay, so I'll entertain. I I can see some questions already from 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 the class and from the chat box. I'll be um answering those questions in a few minutes, okay? <laughs> According to Gorky, I will start observing my classmates now. Yes, you can tag what type of audience they are. Okay. Another up uh, uh, type of participants and these three participants i think for me based on experience are the most troublesome ones yes these are the um most difficult participants to handle in my years of experiences and even even during my college reportings or high school uh reports when we, you have to discuss topics in the class These are the most troublesome people you have to deal with. You can never ignore them. Who are they? So any one of you who can guess who they are? Ay wala. <laughs> anyway, okay, here. Agitators, critics. Yeah, I can see one. This one. And And one of you have already encountered this type of participant. Yeah. These are who you call the know-it-alls. Who are the know-it-alls? So, itong know-it-alls na to are what you call the talkers. Okay, the talkers. Uh, a know-it-all uh, know has opinions on every subject and states them in a very... authoritative manner. Yung tipong you've already discussing and then biglang may tata, yes ma'am, that's true. Ad in addition to that, yan, may mga ganong mga participants and then biglang may magre-raise ng hand. To expound that, yan, may mga ganong mga, <laughs> oh my gosh, Kenneth Tristan knows one. Ayan. Um, there are those types of really troublesome participants. Yung tipong, ikaw na kaya dito? Sige, ikaw na yung mag-discuss. Yan. Yeah, Bibo Kid number one, number two, number three. Yeah. Pero, even though they are that troublesome, uh, um, ang, sabi natin na, keep our enemies closer. So, itong mga to, sila yung talagang pinaka, ma, ano, maaabuso natin. Yan. Yeah. These are the trainees that you can abuse. These are the trainees that you can take advantage of. Okay, how? Well, before you know how, let's learn first why. Why do we have these kinds of trainees? So, um, these trainees, sabi diba, when we're confronted with such kind of different behaviors, Let's step back and objectively assess the root cause of this behavior. Um, maybe this individual uh, simply responds to what he thinks people expected of him. Siguro, honor student to. Siguro, uh, magaling talaga to sa klase. Kaya kailangan, kailangan marami ako masabi kasi magaling ako eh. Ganon. So parang, yun yung, yun yung ano eh, yung perceive niya sa topic eh. And, Um, maybe they are not often acknowledged and nakikita nila that this training is a venue for them to, you know, eventually share their experiences. Ma-feel nila na, um, may alam naman ako eh, may sasabihin ako. Ayan. So, um, yun yung mga potential reasons kung bakit ganun sila. At times, uh, people speak up because 
siguro o talagang enthusiastically engaged sila <clears throat> doon sa training, doon sa topic na dinidiscuss. Talagang ano, um experience na siya, tsaka alam na talaga yung topic, talagang na-pick yung interest niya. So, it's not necessarily a bad thing for a know it all. Um uh, ang ang hindi lang uh, talaga maganda is na na monopolize niya kasi yung training. Second, yung mga attendees, sige. Alam na alam naman niya yan eh. Sige, siya na lang sumagot. So, hindi na kayong uh, magsasalita yung mga participants. Um, second, uh, mangyayari, minsan nag extend yung time dahil sa kanila. Kasi yung time for inputs of the whole class, napunta na sa kanya. So, how to deal with them? How to deal with such kind of uh, participants? So, syempre, um, first, pasalamatan mo yung tao. Thank the person and move on to the topic. No? Uh, thank the person. Uh, thank you for that very um, uh, good explanation or for that um, additional uh, input, Sir X. Now, let, can, let, uh, may I hear a few um, inputs from the other attendees as well? So, pwede ganon. Tapos, um, what ito yung script na pwede nyo gamitin. Thank you, sir, for your particip- participation. Now, it's time to hear the others, mga, mga ganon. Pero syempre, you say it politely kasi baka naman ma-turn ma off or ma- um, ano tawag doon? Ma-offend si, si Koya, di ba? Koya talaga. <laughs> okay? And then, um, i-acknowledge mo yung ano niya, yung expertise niya. Tapos, sasabihin mo, Sir, uh, thank you ha. Um, I know you're an expert in here. Pwede po ba? Uh, later, can I ask permission to call on you on some specific examples sa discussion natin later? So, sabi ko sa inyo, di ba? Let's use them. Let's abuse them. So kung, di ba sabi natin, a trainer doesn't always know everything. There are, we also learn from our participants. So, syempre, let these participants share their knowledge as well. So that's one venue na uh, pwede natin gawin para magamit natin yung pagka-know it all niya. Okay? Sabi ni Sig- Sigfried Laborte, I experienced this scenario, kaya ginagabi na ang workshop, ang daming story sa buhay. Yeah. Pero how how do we how do we limit that? How do we Okay, sir. Um thank you for that input. Let's proceed with let's move forward with our discussion. Let's not let's not um deal away with the topic. Lagi wag tayong madidistract. Lagi nating ibabalik sa topic. Okay? I-reframe natin yung discussion para bumalik sa topic talaga lagi. So, well, it's, it cannot be done over time. So, practice will help us become better in, in doing it. So, practice lang tayo, okay? Lagi nyo tandaan yung mga ganitong do it all. Yung mga matatalino, mga lagi nagtatanong, ayan. Yung tipong, sa sobrang, sa sobrang dami, para ayaw mo na mag-discuss, sila na lang yung gusto mong pag-discuss. Eh. So, co-op them, C-O-O-P-T, co-op them for assistance, okay? Now, Never compete with these kind of people. Don't insult them. Um, don't get defensive. And uh, don't express anger, okay? Lagi nyong, lagi nyong sasabihin na, for example, pag may mga ganun, yung, yan, going back to the questioner, pag may mga ganun na, bakit ganyan, 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 ganyan? So sabihin mo, I'm not here to defend the content. I am here to explain to you and teach you how to use it. So, sabi diplomasya lang lagi yan. Walang nananalo in any argument. Lagi kayong talo if you if you uh, bite in their bait. Okay? Uh, what's the best way to be an effective participant later? We'll be discussing that if we still have time. Okay? Okay, next! Yeah, the manipulator. Ano yung manipulator? The manipulator are those na who always are always good at debate or expressing their um side of the story and then influencing the attendees na 
matapos isipin nyo. Sumama kayo sa kulto ko. <laughs> Mga ganon. Um, mag, ano tayo, mag-gapit, bisik tayo, sama-sama tayo, eto yung opinion natin. He's not saying that verbally, but based on his actions, based on what things he is expressing, ang nangyayari, the other participant tends to agree with him. Pero, yung ina-express niya na side, paano kung hindi valid? Paano kung off the topic? Paano kung mali yung side niya na taliwas or opposite of what you are actually teaching them? So, bakit may mga ganyan? but may mga manipulator? A, probably they are bosses in their specific departments. So, pasintabi po sa mga department heads or managers out there. It's just a probability, okay? I'm not stating it as a sure thing. It's just a behavior. Disclaimer po. Ayan. So, um, the other thing is that uh, probably this person wants to be acknowledged. Um, he, he enjoys when he's become the center of attention and leads the group. Now, how to deal with them, okay? So, make them leaders of the workshops or the teams or the group, okay? And then, when they, come, when they become leaders, sabihin mo, uh, minimize, uh, uh, facilitate, the dis- uh, facilitate the workshop or the discussion, but minimize talking and listen more with the team. Ganon yung specific instruction mo pag nagpa-workshop ka. Para yung manipulator, Siya ngayon, oo, still, he has the authority to own the team. But then, mas maririnig niya yung voice ng mga other attendees. So that's how you can deal with manipulators. And of course, ikaw bilang trainer, um, at one point, you will say, yes, sir, you may have a point. And this is a fact. However, So, i-point mo ngayon kung kung ano yung yung topic na gusto mong sabihin. Um, hindi hindi kasi okay na kinokontra natin palagi yung attendees. We know na tayo ay nagtuturo uh, and we know better most of the time. Pero we don't know everything. So, we should learn to listen. And still, solicit responses from these kinds of people because in one way or another, they may have a point, right? Okay? Clear? Sabi ni Rochelle Pacheca, madalas po nangyayari yan kapag siya na yung next reporter and wala siyang handa na presentation. Pinapahaba niya yung oras through questioning. Sometimes off-topic na ang tanong niya. Probably. Para better grades ba? Ah, and I mean, participate. So, how to deal with them? How to How to shorten that that topic so um minsan you avoid looking at the person din pala para kasi pag tingin ka ng tingin niya akala niya akala niya gusto mong marinig yung opinion niya so kaya nga di ba tayo mga trainers we learn how when and where to look hindi lang tayo titingin sa isang participant we we um gala ayun we stroll our eyes or glare or stare um from to to the different portions of the classroom kasi uh, we need to ins- to assure our attendees na they have to learn something okay and we are um giving them attentions as well or fair attention for everyone and ito ayan the last but never the least i think this is the last intellectual show off or rambler Sino yung mga intellectual show-off or rambler? So yung mga intellectual show-off or rambler, um, sila yung, um, they have difficulty making things simple or giving concise statements. Gumagawa siya ng mga grand, yung sinasabi kanina ni Jasmine Bayon. Um, sila yung uh, nagbibigay ng grandiose theories. Yung pinahaba lang niya yung explanation niya, pero yun din yun, alam mo yun, yung ang dami niyang um, just beating around the bush. I'm sorry, it's so hard to speak in Philippine. Joke. Ayan. Um, sila yung 
Ang daming bulaklak sa sa ayan, high polluting word. Yan, yeah. Thank you for the word. Um sila yung madaming mga sinasabi. Um yung inexplain ko, okay. I have halimbawa, inexplain ko, I have a cat. Okay. So sabi niya I have a, a cerulean uh cat who is yung tipo ang dami ng adjective. Ganon yung mga intellectual show off. Yes. They are always give jargons. Jargons meaning, ito yung mga terminologies na certain group of people lang yung nakakaitindi. Like, for example, electrical engineer circuits, Ohm's law, etc., etc. Instead of explaining uh, layman, explaining it in layman's term, yung mga ganon. So, minsan, tayo mga trainers, nagiging ganyan din, nagiging intellectual show of tayo. Especially when explaining some technical things. But then, mas ma-appreciate tayo ng trainees natin if we explain it in a sense na mas maiintindihan kahit normal na tao na walang expertise. So, kung tayo nga, di ba? Kung tayo nga bilang trainers, we are um, irritated, tama ba? Irate, ayan. Kapag merong mga ganyang participants, eh din lalo na yung napakaraming participants natin na tayo naman yung nagiging intellectual show off. So, bakit may mga ganyang intellectual show off? Um, yung iba kasi, medyo nahihirapan lang talaga sila to build a point straight, straight you know. Um, kailangan muna nilang i-build yung story para pumunta sila talaga sa point na gusto nilang puntahan. Um, minsan yung thoughts nila, ganun eh, hindi, hindi organize yung thoughts nila. Um, sometimes, attention starved, okay, attention seeker. Um, in both cases, talagang it's a problem about personality and communication style. So, how to deal with them? So, yung, yung how he explained it, get the thought from that, and then explain it in a simpler manner. Okay, then ask your audience, okay, how, what can you say about it? Okay, uh, thank you, sir, for explaining that. May, you know, um, if you have, um, uh, if, if you can summarize what you have uh, told us, or if you can give us the, what, what you wanted to pertain to, or give us some evidence on, on this topic that you want to show us. So, mga ganon. Um, Dip, uh, diplomatically interrupt ayun. diplomatically interrupt to refocus the person on the content so ah sir parang na ba man example ang habang ah sir so you what what you mean is ganito so sasabihin niya ah yes ma'am ano ah, ma'am ganito po yun ang lalong humaba yung store ah okay sir so this is what your point the, does it, everyone agree with what he said biglang yung participants sasabihin Ha? Huh? Ano daw sinabi? Ah, yes ma'am! Yes ma'am! Yung ibang participants, di ba ganyan? Yan. Yes, um, totoo naman, yung mga intellectual show of most of the time are dunung-dunungan. But then, doesn't know it actually. Parang mga magagaling na drawing yan. Magagaling magkatha ng mga tula. Ayan. They just um, weave stories of their own just to show that they are good. So, sabi ko nga, um, it can either be a personality problem or a communi- communication style. So, just, um, sabi ko nga, get the key point, distill, distill, D-I-S-T-I-L-L, distill the key points. I-filter mo ano yung key points sa gusto niya sa gaya. Para, matapos na siya. Kasi when you hear, when he hears na, Yes, ma'am, yan po yung gusto kong ipaliwanag. Hindi ko po kasi makuha yung tamang salita. So, you will realize it. Um, tapos, syempre, pag lagi mong tatandaan when someone expresses their opinion or inputs, always thank them. Kasi at least, they, buti nga sila, eh, may, may participation. Hindi ka tulad ni sleeper. Ayun, tulog na. <laughs> uh, tulog na, di ba? So, at least sila, nagpa-participate sila in one way or another. We just have to filter it. Okay. Clear ba sa atin? Ang no-no lang sa atin dito, let's not show impatience. Uh, let's not interrupt them rudely. Kasi ano ba naman siya? Hindi na ako nakatapos ng sinasabi ko. Diba? So kung tayo nga, um, 
when we are discussing our lectures, we want them to raise our hand or give time for them to ask questions. Of course, yun yung participants natin when they're, minsan na alam po ako magsalita, ma'am, ikakat nyo pa ako. So, you acknowledge them. Don't interrupt them rudely. And then, um, let's not refuse uh, to acknowledge the person who wants to speak. Hindi, sir, wag tama ka na. Yung iba namang attendees, no. Never say that. So, kanina ka palagsasalita, iba naman. So, maybe you can say that with humor, okay, as a joke. But then, express it in a better manner. Okay, a more appropriate manner. Kasi, maswerte tayo if we have such kinds of participants who um, actively participate and give their inputs. Unlike yung iba, I've experienced attending yan, at attending naman ako, uh, a training na grabe talaga, yung, 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 feeling ko yung, yung pawis na nung trainer, talagang dugo na yung lumalabas kasi ang hirap niya pigain yung um, inputs sa mga participants. Gusto, gusto ko sumagot, alam mo yon na mama ko, ganyan, ganyan. Kaya lang ba mapagkamalan ako ano eh? Anong tawag daw? Questioner? O kaya know it all? So, tahimik na lang din ako. So, parang, ang hirap. Ang nangyari niyan, um, nag-will of fortune na lang siya. Para yung mga attendees, walang choice, kundi sumagot pag tinawag. So, yun. Um, those are the types of participants that we have. Kino-sino nga sila? Uh, who can chat to me all those um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine participants. Tama ba? Oy, complete. <laughs> Ang bilis naman ni Leandro Antonio Dasco. Okay. So, who's it participant na? So, let's always think na pwede natin gamitin ang ating mga participants. Ang bad, no? Ang bad, ang bad ng term. Um, how can we say it in a better manner? We can always um, use our participants effectively. Communication is a two-way process. You can always um, share with them your knowledge and get something from them as well. Just learn to listen. And Sabi ko nga kanina, as I've always been repeating, when you are confronted with difficult behavior, take time to step back, objectively assess, bakit ganun yung behavior niya, for you to be able to identify how to learn more from them. Okay? How to deal with them. Wow! Ang dami nyo nga na. Ang galing nila. Alam nila yung nine. Okay, so we have the manipulator, the know-it-all, the intellectual show-off, the sleeper, the quiet one, or the withdrawer. The questioner, the class clown, the arguer, and the whiner. So those are our different types of participants. Uh, meron pa, marami pa sila. Kaya lang, ito lang yung na-cover natin for now because of um, time constraints. Um, siguro I can um, solicit questions na for now. If you have any questions, just type in the Q&A and I'll try to answer it. Okay. Um, a question from Mark Ryan Kuyapen. Okay. May I ask what if yung trainer ay nagalit during training? What to, <laughs> what to do to him or her? And how to avoid this kind of situation. Uh, Mark Ryan, are you an attendee here or a trainer here? So, okay, if, if the, you are a trainer, okay? If you're a trainer and ikaw yung nagalit, parang nawala yung question. I can't see the question anymore. And if ikaw yung nagalit, Sabi natin, um, bibilang ka daw ng 1 to 10, inhale and exhale, para matanggal yung galit mo. Kasi in the first place, be, ang, being a trainer, hindi ka dapat magalit. It's a no-no. Never argue, never 
uh, show impatience and never engage in lengthy discussion raised by your participant. So how to handle such situation? Ikaw bilang trainer, kung trainer ka na nagalit ka, step back outside of the room. Okay? Pag okay ka na, halmado ka na, then go back. Okay? Um, not being able to control your emotion during training is being unprofessional as a trainer. So let's try to, you know, practice naman yun eh. Handle our uh, trainings well. Now, merong isang, um, uh, what do you call this? Isang tip or tricks na I can share with you para maiwasan mong magalit during training. May wasa mong magalit dahil sa makakulit na trainees, dahil sa mga problema ng trainees. So, what you can do is give them an envelope or a post-it. Um, have them write, okay, before we start the training, write all your concerns, your issues in this post-it. Then, itago nyo sa mga bag nyo. Okay? Balikan nyo lahat ng problema nyo, lahat ng concerns nyo, lahat ng mga stress nyo. Mamaya, after the class, let's just enjoy this eight-hour class or this four-hour class, okay? So para lang to, to lighten the mood, para alam mo na na yung mga tao talagang um, will have a lightened mood during the training. Okay, so how do you handle it if the participant is already questioning your credibility? Ayan. So meron tayong ano dyan? Meron tayong sagot dyan, okay? Sabi natin, sin, sa palagay niyo sir, sino yung mga tao na gumagawa ng ganon? Sila yung mga fighter or arguer. Sabi, if the argue, if the arguer personal na yung attack, okay? Um, i-ignore mo yung attack. Okay? Reframe an attack on you as an attack on the problem. Okay? Reframe the personal attack as friendly or Reframe from past wrongs. Okay, these are these are the um pagkukulang before, but this is our future remedy. Then reframe you and me to we. So, um, bakit ko questionin yung credibility mo? Dahil ba incompetent ka sa trainer? O dahil ba talagang ma-question lang siya? So, Sabi, di ba? Most especially your profile is shared to the participants and you can be Google. Okay. Sabi, sabi di ba? Ay, nasa ano din yun eh? Nasa role yon ni the trainer. Um, Bako question yung credibility mo if you put holes okay, on how people perceive you. Siyempre, kung trainer ka, tapos yung mga public accounts mo, yung mga um public post mo unethical it will reflect negatively to you as a person you might say iba naman po kasi yung professional life sa public life ko pero as a trainer you are catalyst of learning whatever you say should be something na fact na totoo na valid so, iwasan natin na magkaroon ng mga things that will question our validity. So, yun lang naman yun. Uh, it is, um, earlier it is said that communication is a two-way learning. Will there be a webinar for the types and how to manage speakers? So, we have a training, you training the trainers. Kasi as I said earlier, um, this session is just a portion of uh, one of our classes in ASMEX Alpha. Sorry, shameful plugging or um, endorsement. Pero being a trainer has a specific process from analysis on what the participants need, on the design and development of the training material na ipepresent mo, on how to implement the training, paano mo ipapacilitate yung training, paano mo ibibigay, how will you articulate the message, and then how will you evaluate, evaluate kung effective ka sa trainer. So, those things that I've said are part of our training the trainers um, training in Alpha. So uh, we can we can talk with our CEO 
um, if we can have a free webinar as well, a short webinar on how to manage speakers. Pero most probably, I think the better thing to do is how to articulate message. Kasi minsan, yung nasa isip mo, hindi mo masabi. So, napaka broad nung nasa isip mo. Ito yung mensahe na, gusto, na naisip kong i-share eh, pero hindi ko siya masabi ng ayos. So, maybe a training on that, on how to express your thoughts by words para maging effective speaker ka. I think that's a good topic for a webinar. If you will be a participant, what category would you like to fall? Hmm. I want to be... Is it serious? <laughs> Mr. Will Shell Canlaso. I want to be a know-it-all para I can help the trainer to share my learnings. Kaya lang, most of the people hates know-it-all. So, I'll just maybe be a sleeper. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Kidding aside, of course, I want to be a good participant. Diba? I want to be a good participant. Uh, Nagpa-participate, well, nagbibigay ng opinion kapag kailangan, uh, nagtatanong kapag may hindi alam, <clears throat> nagpa-participate in the workshop. So, that's the kind of trainee I want to be. Okay. What are the ideal characteristics of a good participant? Uh, I think nabanggit ko na ngayon lang. So, first, uh, a person who asks questions as needed, gives um, opinions uh, uh, and constructive feedbacks. So, uh, provides inputs as necessary, actively participates, and energetically and passionately um, listens carefully with the trainer. Okay. <clears throat> what is the most effective tool to motivate participants? Um, Miss Marilyn Mendoza, oi, classmate. Um, is it uh, during the training or before the training? Magkaiba kasing tool yun. Okay. During the training, um, the most effective tool to motivate, to motivate a participant to uh, participate is to give attention to them. So kasi if ang participant nga is assured na ah, um, the trainer listens and I am being watched, ba? I am being I am being taught actually. So then a participant will automatically participate kasi nakikita nila ah interesting yung content. Okay naman yung trainer and nabibigyan naman ako ng attention hindi yung siya lang ni laging nagpa-participate. Hindi lang lecture-based yung training, may mga workshop din. Kasi syempre nakakatama din na sipin mo buong araw, puro lecture lang, wala man lang tayuan sa upuan, wala man lang exercises, uh, exercises, icebreakers or something. So, yun po. I, 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 I hope the question was answered. Yeah. So, do we still have time? It's already 9.03. Are you still willing to, to stay ba? Or what? Sige, I'll just... Wow, napaka-enthusiastic ni Sir Giancarlo Ortiz. Sige, hanggang 1 a.m. tayo dito, sir. <laughs> okay, anyway. um Yes, uh, that's what I am about to say. I will just entertain last three questions. So I have to filter out yung most important na pwede kong maiwan sa inyo. Ayan. Okay. Being a trainer, how did your CTP help you and how to attain CTP? Okay. Um, a certified training, professional training is a certification training that I've acquired from an international um, company. Um, it taught me the ADI cycle, analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. Understanding who my, who my participants are and what learnings they need paano gumawa ng training module, paano mag-implement ng training, at paano i-evaluate yung training sila. Kasi before, when I was a trainer in my previous company, um, I, I teach um, operators, engineers, supervisors, technicians, up to manager level. Okay? When I was training there, I'm more involved on facilitating the training. Meaning ganito, 
nagtuturo. But then hindi ko hindi ako nagpapa-evaluate ng I am I an effective trainer or hindi ako nagbibigay ng pre and post test before na para to gauge kung natuto ba yung participants or hindi. Or I didn't even know before the levels of training na dapat pala may level 1 which is basic, level 2, um, intermediate, level 3, advanced, level 4, expert. And whatever type of training, merong mga uh, tamang paraan on how to teach them and how to assess people kung natuto sila o hindi. So I've learned it through CTP. And similarly, we can teach you that in our training the trainer session. It's a certification course then via Alpha. So if you're interested, Sir Riz Palaganas, maybe you can um, send an inquiry via Alpha to, to know more about the course. Okay, last two. I hope I've answered your question, Sir Ryan, uh, Sir Riz. Okay, how to acquire CTP? So yun nga, um, we have an equivalent session at Alpha Aslex PH. So it's at uh, more cheaper than the training that I've attended. Kasi what the thing that I've attended is, is it okay to tell you the, the price? But it's like six digits. So um, para mas maging affordable siya, locally, we, we are um, offering it locally here in the Philippines. So via Alpha. So yeah. You can check it out na lang. Okay. Okay, thank you then, Sir Riz. So, for doing trainings, what if my attendees always negate everything that I teach them? Saying the other thing is better and what I'm teaching is just a waste of time. So, what you can do is to privately talk to him, okay, or her. Then tell, tell them what seems to be um, the things that he wants to learn. Enumerate niya, okay? Tapos sabihin mo, if wala talaga yung gusto niyang matutunan dun sa itinuturo mo, just tell him, the scope of our learning for today is this, this, and this, and limited to this. This is the scope. So if this is not um, the training that you are intended, you wanted to learn, these are the topics that you wanted to learn, then uh, perhaps uh, we can offer you another training or uh, may I know who sent you for this training? If, kasi minsan yung mga department heads, di ba? Sila yung nagsesend sa'yo ng training ni Jan, tas you always ask, what's it for me? Pina-attend lang ako basta dito ng manager ko. Then you have to confirm with the manager, ano ba yung expected uh, expectations ng nagsend sa'yo for that training? Ano ba yung gusto nilang matutun? Because somehow, that person may have seen that you are lacking in some aspects. So, you have to know. Kasi ako din, when I was a neophyte, nung bago pa lang ako sa kumpanya, ang daming training na pinatin sa akin, asar na asar na ako, wala na akong um, chance na maggala sa linya or um, maggala talaga eh. No? O na pag sa operators or engineers or supervisors. I always attend trainings. And then there came a time, ano bang gamit ng mga training na to? Ang dami-dami, parang redundant na. So, I had to ask my boss. Hey, boss, ano ba yung expectations mo sa akin for this session? So, I had to confirm. These are the expectations from me. Okay, these are the things that I should take note of pag umatend ako ng training. Kasi alam ko, ito yung hahanapin sa akin nung nagpa-attend sa akin ng training. Eh, pero kung ikaw yung pumili mismo ng training, gumastos ka na sa sarili mong pera, and then you eventually learned na wala, hindi naman pala ito yung gusto ko matutunan, then ask yourself, have I reviewed the, the syllabus of the of the training? Have I asked the training provider na ito po yung expectations ko during the training? Is it covered po ba? So you have to confirm. It's not always the, um, the fault of the trainer, the provider, the training content. Uh, minsan, you have to clarify lang talaga at the start, ano yung scope and limitations and expectations for the training. I hope I have answered um question of Sir Renzi May. Yeah, so if sapilitan yung pag-attend, ask them why. It's not bawal. Um, it's your prerogative as a ano tawag, subordinate to ask your specific questions. Pero syempre, um, in a more appropriate manner naman. 
Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah. so Maganda tong dalawang question na to kaya lang last question ko na eh. Um sige, I'll still answer these two questions. Okay. What is the best time to conduct training or meeting? Okay. According to studies, the best time for 75% of attendees, whatever learning time you have, learning style you have is 8 to 12. Okay. Pero when we say about retention, any time of the day is okay, but maximum retention period, 1 hour, 100%, 2 hours, 50% na lang retention period mo. So dapat, in between lectures, merong exercises or workshops para ma-apply yung learning na yun. Hindi pwedeng buong araw kayong magtuturoan, tapos i-expect mo naging skill na yung learning. A knowledge will never be a skill if it's not applied. Okay? So, may different learning styles ang tao. Some pwedeng mas matagal makapag-retain and some mas madaling matuto pag gabi. Uh, what I'm saying is, sa statistics lang, 75%. So, yung 25% medyo ano sila isolated case. Okay? And lastly, how about if I lost the discussion and as a participant, ay nagtanong ako, Pero hindi nag-cross ang tanong ko sa sagot ng trainer. Should I keep asking or keep it na lang para hindi mapahiya ang trainer? Okay. So yung tanong mo, parang iba yung intindi ni trainer. Tama ba, anonymous attendee? So parang nagtanong ako, pero parang hindi na-get ni, ni trainer yung tanong ko. So ako bilang attendee, I can repeat it twice. Uh, once pala, kasi the first time I say it, then I repeat my question. i -re reframe ko na lang siya or i -re ko yung question ko. Baka kasi naging intellectual show off ako. Ang dami kong ginamit na jargon, sa dami kong pa-eklat sa pagsasabi ng tanong ko. Kaya yung trainer medyo na lost ang dami kasi sinasabi. Ano ba yung gusto niyong talagang itanong yon? So you just rephrase your question and then ask. Pag hindi pa rin niya na-gets, then maybe privately you can ask the trainer, um, Sir, ma'am, ito po kasi yung gusto ko talagang itanong. Kasi dito po sa topic na to, so bigyan mo siya ng context dun sa tanong mo. Sa topic po kasi na to, parang medyo hindi po po siya na-gets eh. So how to, ano po, how to to do this and this. So ganun, um, if you give context naman or background dun sa tanong mo, um, I think eventually ma magigets din yun yung taong gusto mong tanong. Okay, I guess I have exhausted my last three questions. Um, I hope everyone learned. May natutunan ba guys? Um, are the topics clear? If it's clear, can you type crystal? Is the topic or is managing different types of participants webinar clear? I uh, thank you guys. Okay, so hope to see you in the next webinars that we have and I hope you learned well. Stay safe at home and hopefully maging colleague ko kayo as trainers in the future, right? So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you. Mukhang lahat talaga nag-type ng thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Kapit lang. Ayan. April 30, matatapos. <laughs> thank you, Africa. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone, for participating and raising your question. Para ayaw pa rin, <laughs> para ayaw pa rin na mag-log. Oh, 72 pa rin kayo. <laughs> Yes, hanggang April 30.